Hello, brothers and sisters. I have a word on my heart that I wanted to share with you guys. So first of all, let's just look at a definition. I looked up the definition, revelation. So what does Merriam-Webster have to say about this definition? This was really interesting. I was not expecting to see this. So a usually secret or surprising fact that is made known. An act of revealing or communicating divine truth. Something that is revealed by God to humans. A pleasant, often enlightening surprise. So the word the Lord gave me today for you guys is joy. It's the year 2022, and my prayer for you is that God will give you a revelation of who you are and whose you are and for his plans for your life. Romans 15, 13 says, Oh, may the God of hope fill you with joy, fill you up with peace, so that your believing lives filled with the life-giving energy of the Holy Spirit will brim over with hope. That's out of the message. I just love how poetic that is. It just gives you such a beautiful picture, again, of a verse many of us have said, many of us have thought, but it suddenly just puts it into this beautiful, it's like a song, how it's written, right? God wants to give you hope. God wants to give you joy. So I looked up joy. What does joy mean? What does God mean when he's saying, and he's talking about joy? Well, joy, we know, it doesn't come from happenings around us. It's not from circumstances that we can see or circumstances that we can feel or things that we can hear. It actually comes from inside. We know that it's a fruit of the Spirit that it's talked about in Galatians, right? We know that it is deep-rooted and inspired by the Holy Spirit. That sense of happiness is not based on something external. It's based on something internal. So we know in James, he says, Consider it joy when you face trials of all kinds. Well, that's pretty hard given the situation that many of us are in around the world and have found ourselves in for most of the last two years, right? But yet when we know and we trust that God is for us, and if he's for us, who can be against us? When we actually know our identity lies in him rather than in what somebody else says, this is who we are, or this is what we're meant to do. When we actually spend time in his word, when we start to understand more of who he says we are, that's where that pure joy comes from. So I just want to jump in to Nehemiah 8.10 really quick. Nehemiah 8.10 says, The joy of the Lord is our strength. It actually even goes so far as to say something a little bit more fun than that. So I like to look at the context of what is happening, what's being said, rather than just pulling out a little verse. So I just looked a little bit from before and a little bit after. So Nehemiah is the governor, and along with Ezra the priest and the scholar and the Levites, they were teaching the people, and they said to all the people, This day is holy to God, your God. Don't weep and carry on. They said this because all the people were weeping as they heard these words of revelation. He continued, I love this part, go home and prepare a feast, holiday food and drink, and share it with those who don't have anything. This day is holy to God. The joy of the Lord is your strength. The joy of the Lord is your strength. When you're at home, when you're at work, when you're out and about, and you're looking for that joy, it's not going to come from something you can see with your natural eyes. You need to spend time with the Father. You need to spend time at His feet. You need to spend time in worship and in His Word to actually really get a sense of who He says you are. Because if He's saying, consider it joy when you face trials, He is creating that character inside of you to prepare you for what's to come, right? So how do we do that? We look at Psalm Hundred four. So I'm just going to jump into my NLT because I like this version of this one. Shout with joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him singing with joy. Acknowledge that the Lord is God. He made us and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. 
Give thanks to him and praise his name for the Lord is good. His unfailing love continues forever. His faithfulness continues to each generation. When we know that his word is true, when we can stand on that and we speak it aloud, it does not return void. So I encourage you guys, when you're reading scripture, write it out, put it on post-it notes, start to memorize it, start to put it into your heart so that it's there at a moment's notice where you can have it on the tip of your tongue to encourage yourself to say it out loud, right? The joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord is my strength, right? We want to be thankful. So I have this fun little action that I thought I would share with you guys because really God alone can produce that true joy. But I think it's important that we change our attitudes to one of gratitude, which sounds very cliche, but I think it's actually really important when we look at what it says in Psalm 104 specifically, how do we enter his courts? How do we enter his presence, right? So I have with me a little jar. So our family did this one year where you just take a jar. This happens to be a fun little Christmas jar. You could take any jar, doesn't matter. You could decorate it or just have it super plain. And what you're going to do with it is you are just going to take a fun little thing of sticky notes and a pen and you're just going to leave it out, whether it's just you, whether it's you and your family. If your kids are old enough to write, they can write their own. If not, you can write it for them. But what I want you to do is it's a little bit of a challenge. Maybe think of it as a 365 challenge. So even though we're a few days into January, I want you to think about taking a little sticky note every time you see God do something amazing in your life. When you see God do something amazing in your life, you're going to take this little piece of paper and you're just going to write it down and you're going to pop it in the jar. And you don't necessarily have to reread it. You just pop it in the jar and you just keep going. And you pop it in the jar. And what this does is it creates a habit. It creates a habit that's attached to your identity. And your identity is who you are in God and that he is for you. And if he's for you, that's all that matters, right? He's cheering you on. All of heaven is cheering you on. They want you to succeed. You have been created with a goal and a purpose that has been sent from heaven through you to do what he's asking you to do. He's trusting you to do, to influence those around you, to change the atmosphere around you. So this is a great way to get started. So every time you see what I call a little fingerprint of God, he does something tiny or something significant in your life or something you see even happening in somebody else's life, jot it down. Because then what I would love for you to do, and I would love to hear your feedback after December 31st, 2022, when you sit down and you open this jar that is full of little notes of gratitude and you revisit all those amazing moments that God has actually given you all throughout the year to build your faith, to say, I am for you, right? So I just want to close with this from Philippians. This is one of my favorite verses that I memorized years ago. Another one I encourage you to memorize. Memorizing scripture is one of those things that can never be taken from you because it's in your heart. It's there. It's there to draw on at a moment's notice, right? It's the sword of the spirit when you talk about the armor of God. We want to have his words on our lips. All right, so Philippians 4, 4 to 8. <laughs> Always be full of joy in the Lord. I say it again, rejoice. Let everyone see that you are considerate in all that you do. Remember, the Lord is coming soon. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all that he has done. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything that we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and your minds as you live in Christ Jesus. I'm going to keep going because it's just so good. And now, dear brothers and sisters, one final thing. Fix your thoughts on what is true and honorable and right and pure and lovely and admirable. Think about these things that are excellent and worthy of praise. Keep putting into practice all that you have learned and received from me, everything that you've heard from me and saw me doing. Then the God of peace will be with you. With that, I leave you till next time. Bless you.